Your Excellencies, Madam President, Mr. Prakar, Ministers, High Commissioners, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure as Chair of the Royal Commonwealth Society to welcome you all this evening to our Chogham Malta 2015 reception. On this, the opening day of the 24th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, it's just very encouraging that you've all taken the time out of your very busy schedules to join us here tonight and to celebrate the vital role that civil society plays in today's Commonwealth. Our citizens are just as important as our governments in the Commonwealth family. And there is no truer testament to this fact than there are 80 plus societies, institutions, associations, organisations and charities that work continuously towards improving the lives of Commonwealth peoples. Increasingly, civil society is being recognised as a key partner in bringing society and government closer together. It is being celebrated as a leading proponent of best practice and change throughout the Commonwealth, and I am delighted that representatives of a large number of those organisations are with us tonight. The Royal Commonwealth Society was founded in 1868 and is constituted by Royal Charter. It is the oldest and largest non-governmental, non-partisan civil society organisation devoted to the modern Commonwealth. Our extensive network of individuals and organisations is committed to improving the lives and prospects of Commonwealth citizens across the world. Supported by public generosity, whilst being reliant on donors, sponsors and partnerships, the Society conducts a range of events, activities and programmes aimed at promoting the value and the values of the Commonwealth. Drawing on its capacity and reputation for thought leadership, its Commonwealth convening power and pan-Commonwealth civil society connections, the RCS engages with partners to raise awareness of issues which inhibit prosperity, endanger the, the rights of citizens and curb opportunities. These include gender inequality, the denial of access to education, social violence and the violation of rights for LGBTI citizens and also environmental threats. And it was very pleasing that so many of these issues were in the statement of the Maltese Prime Minister this morning. The Royal Commonwealth Society acts as a critical friend to the Commonwealth, supporting the Secretariat and other organisations in their crucial work, but unafraid to forge a path ahead where action less restrained by diplomacy or bureaucracy is needed. Central to the Society's activities is its contributory and participatory approach seeking to build the Commonwealth's capacity to promote independent, meaningful and pan-Commonwealth discussion for change on issues of international significance. Unfortunately, the Commonwealth is often seen as a relic of its past. Youth programmes, teacher and cultural exchanges, policy initiatives and many other activities performed under the auspices of the Commonwealth are frequently overlooked, but engagement with citizens, especially younger citizens, and opportunities for intergenerational dialogue are of vital importance to the continued relevance of the Commonwealth. We are delighted that during the Queen's speech at today's opening ceremony, Her Majesty acknowledged the exciting environmental initiative that the RCS with our partners Cool Earth and the Commonwealth For Forestry Association will be pioneering in years to come. The Queen's Commonwealth canopy, when completed, will create a network of forest con conservation initiatives throughout the 53 nations. <coughs> It is in honour of Her Majesty's service and dedication to the Commonwealth for, the, for more than 60 years and it will demonstrate individually and collectively the capacity of the Commonwealth and its citizens to act together and lead the world in efforts to protect the forest upon which their communities and the planet of the whole, as a whole depends. It is a testament to the convening power of the Royal Commonwealth Society that tonight we've been able to gather together such an eminent group of Commonwealth citizens during this crucial meeting of Commonwealth leaders. Earlier this afternoon, our Commonwealth Heads of Government in closed session elected a new Secretary General. On behalf of the Royal Commonwealth Society, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to congratulate Baroness Scotland's appointment to this critical post. Can I also just say that as another woman, to have the first woman Secretary General, uh, it's a pleasure to be in Malta to witness that. Unfortunately, we do live in uncertain and at times dangerous world, and the Commonwealth faces a myriad of challenges and tests. I wish Baroness Scotland strength and wisdom in tackling these challenges, 
and assure her that the society as ever is here to assist her in any way that we can. I would also like to thank our gracious hosts, the people of Malta, for having us here to this beautiful country. Your hospitality and warmth are without compare and we thank you very, very much. Even the weather hasn't spoilt your warm welcome. <laughs> I'd also particularly like to thank Mr Nigel Barclam, who's the chairman of the Henley Media Group, who is our very kind and benevolent sponsor this evening and has made this, uh, this evening's function possible. Nigel, thank you for your generosity and your ongoing support of the Society's work. We really appreciate it. So, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude my remarks, I would like to express our sincere gratitude and thanks to the <coughs> President of Malta, Her Excellency Marie-Louise Colliero Precker and Mr Edgar Precker for being here with us tonight and for hosting us in this beautiful country. Very warm welcome and I'm now going to hand you over. Thank you. Well, thank you Claire. Good evening to everyone. Just a few short remarks from my part so that I will not stop this beautiful gathering because I really think this is also a team, bu team building exercise. I really must commend the, uh, the, the initiatives taken by the Royal um, Commonwealth Society to bring together um, well, representatives of governments and also civil society. Well, coming from uh, long stands in, in public life myself and in politics in particular, so I really know what governments are and what um, executive, the executive of a government is. Really, I think I, I, I can, with uh, a hand on my conscience, say really that civil society is a main stakeholder in a democracy. Civil society are government's connection to people. Civil society also is a, a very important fundamental for our democracies. So this sort of coming together of representatives of governments and civil society this, this evening is really commendable. Thank you for doing that. On the other hand, um, I would also like to congratulate um, Baroness Scotland, and I think this is also a big statement for Commonwealth, that yes, our first woman general secretary is there, and it comes at a very important time, when we have had our very first historic women, women forum um, for, the common, for the women in Commonwealth. <coughs> So I congratulate her, and I'm sure she will find the support of women and men so that she can continue with this very important uh, work that we have to do in Cornwall. I think the Smalta meeting was also comes at a very important time when really we have to look at what we want to do with Cornwall. Is it going to be just a club? meeting every two years and having meetings in between, or is it going to be uh, that big, strong voice in, on a global stage where we need strong voices to stand up for quite a number of challenges that the world is facing, like how we can live together, how we, coming from different cultures, coming from different hemispheres as well, we can still share we can still respect each other, give dignity to each other. And I think this, is, this was a very opportune time as well for such reflections and let, let's hope our gov um, heads of government have come to um, the, 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 the issues, at the core of the issues through their deliberations during, during, the, uh, during the meeting today. But also I think the fora have also reflected um, such important um, way forward, outlook towards our future in, um, as Commonwealth. On the other hand, I really would like to see for next time um, a f children's forum. Because if we really want relevance and looking at reality of our situations in our different um, 53 countries, the situations that we live, each and every one, in our different countries. We need to look at what our children are saying. We need to listen to our children. We need to create the space for our children to be, to, to safe spaces for them to speak up. And 
give them that right that is so uh, boldly stipulated in their um, UN convention where their rights are um, uh, there for us as leaders to, to take not just note but to actually put them into effect, their right to be heard. But not just that, I would I always like to add to that, not just to be heard, but also for what whatever they're saying, we need to reflect and then act. So in February when I met Miss Caroline Jack in London and we proposed the idea of a children's forum, we knew that we had we had time constraints, time constraints. We tried to do something about this, even though we were really constrained for time. And through my foundation, there's Ruth there, Director General, my foundation for the well-being of society, we have actually gone into a process of uh, consulting children and hearing children, and also <coughs> bringing about together with Ecoscola. Ecoscola is in Maltese, that's Eco School. They, they, are, they concentrate, um, uh, well, this entity uh, run by also some professors from our university. They, they create safe spaces for our school children where they speak about many a time environmental issues. So together with the President's Foundation for the Wellbeing of Society and the Coscola, we have brought about this declaration for children. And hopefully tomorrow they can actually deliver this declaration um, to our heads of government. But I think we need to seriously think for our next job is to have a formal, um, in a certain sense, a children's forum, just like the women's forum, forum, just like the people's forum, just like the youth forum, just like the business forum. Children must have a space, their space in Commonwealth if we really want to see <coughs> Commonwealth moving forward and being relevant for our future. Thank you.